Hey guys, before I jump in the video, I wanted to take a moment real quick and just say Bobby Brackens, 143. We just hit 143 subscribers. We're pretty excited about it. Derek Samuels was our 100, 143rd subscriber, um, which is pretty cool. 143 is one of our uh, favorite songs. The Pack Addicts crew used to listen to it uh, going out to Chelan, Washington on summer vacations. Um, so 143 is a number that means a lot to us and we want to say 143 to all of our subscribers. Um, and and d also wanted to say that we will be doing a giveaway because we hit 100 subscribers. We'll be doing a giveaway on Friday, January 22nd. So if you watch my financial recap video of NBA Hoops uh, Premium Hanger Box um, on Friday, you can uh, sign up and look for the details on the giveaway. So please subscribe uh, ahead of time so you can be eligible for the giveaway. Uh, with that, we will jump into the video. What's up boys and girls, this is your boy Curtis Miso coming in hot with another video. And today I'm gonna be walking you through a PSA submission that the Pack Addicts crew is doing. We are collectively sending in uh, somewhere around 50 cards, um, but I've uh, only calculated the value of, of some of the bigger ones. I'm gonna be showing you um, some of the biggest ones in this video, but if you, uh, cumulatively the value of just the kind of 30 to 35 biggest cards that we're submitting, if they all go to a 10, it would be $21,000. Uh, they're not going to. <laughs> if they all go to a nine, it would be $6,000. So the reality is uh, it'll be somewhere in between there. Um, we've done uh, quite a bit of vetting to get down to these cards, so I don't think uh, we'd be surprised if we get more than a few eights, but um, you never know. Um, and the reality is, you know, you guys, you know, I like to focus on financials in the video. I'm an investment analyst uh, professionally. Um, I don't view investing in cards, quote unquote, investing in cards personally as an investment. I view it as a hobby. I think um, some of the people that are out there talking about cards um, as an investment, it's going to get some people in trouble. Um, an investment, honestly, is, in my view, something that uh, the value of an investment is um, the discounted value of future cash flows and, um, cards don't generate cash flow. It's, it's, it's a piece of cardboard and it, its value is purely determined by supply and demand. So I view investing in cards as speculation, <laughs> um, and you can get in a lot of trouble speculating, betting on, um, uh, someone else paying a higher price in the future. Um, so, so with that in mind, you know, I think it's, you know, personally, I would say, I'm not giving professional financial advice here, but I would say, do not put too much money into cards. View it as a hobby. If you put, you know, 5% of your your assets into cards, that's great. You can afford to lose it, but don't put, don't bet your retirement on cards. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but if we go into, I'll get off my soapbox and let's start talking about some of these cards. Um, and I'll start with um, start small here with, with my cards because mine are, are not nearly as appealing or <laughs> they're not quite to the level of Gibby's. He's pulled some absolute monsters this year. Um, but if we start, uh, we can start small. So here's a sweet, sweet Zion Luminance out of Chronicles. We ripped a ton of it this year. Um, I would say that product like Chronicles is unbelievable for ROI. Um, and that's because... Uh, you pull so many rookies. There's a lot of Jaws and Zions flying out of there, and that's great. You can flip some of them, but if you keep, uh, if you kind of comb through those and find, find ones that you can grade, uh, your ROI starts going up a lot because the typical ROI on uh, a PSA 10 over a PSA 9, for example, is kind of 3 to 5x. Um, and so that quickly kind of allows you to make your money back if you're able to pull out a lot of gradable cards of, of high level players. And so a product like Chronicles where, where rookies fly out of it, yeah, they're more common, but, but you can find more that are gradable. And so, uh, I already, I'm not even including these in, uh, these cards in the value that I calculated, but I just want to show you, these are all out of Chronicles. I got three Zions here. I got a parallel. Uh, jaw teal pretty sweet team color teal i got a hometown heroes rookies and stars i got a tyler hero another tyler hero these aren't chronicles um but that just gives you a sense i mean we ripped so much chronicles we flipped a ton of zions and jaws 
um, and, and then I'm keeping the ones that are the highest quality um, to be graded. So, so this is one of the bigger ones, and this is a cool one. Um, one of the bigger ones out of Chronicles, at least. And so uh, this Zion is going for 20 raw, 45 PSA 9, 135 uh, at a PSA 10. So we will hope, hope that one tends. And then we got this, uh, we'll put them up that way. And then we got a John Morant, a pretty sweet teal parallel of Marquee out of Chronicles as well. This is going for 40 raw, 130 at a nine, 350 roughly at a 10. Some of these are estimates based on kind of uh, taking three to five X of a PSA nine value to get to a 10 if there aren't any comps. Um, but I think this one is relatively clean um, and decently centered. These marquees are hard uh, left to right. You can see it's, it's certainly right biased, but PSA nine is flexible about that. One thing you can do to to see check centering is to just go and look up a PSA 10 or particularly a, a BGS uh, 9.5 or 10 on the centering grade to see what the centering should be. Generally, PSA is pretty uh, flexible with their centering. Uh, the rule of thumb is that it can be 60-40 on the front left to right uh, or top to bottom and still get a 10. Uh, so 60 for 60 percent bias to one side, but I've seen some some cards and especially marquee where it's it looks like it's way more than 60 40 and it's still getting a 10. So I think they're pretty flexible on these ones. So that's a that's a 150 card potentially. Then we got some football here. We got Justin Herbert White Hot rookies. I pulled this. These are all cards I pulled. I pulled this out of a Don Russ retail box uh, before I knew that he was gonna be pretty big, but I was still excited to see a rookie QB. And now it turns out he's the best in the class potentially. Um, Burrow might be better, we'll see. Um, but this is a card that is going for 20 raw, 50 at a 9, and 300 at a PSA 10. So this would be pretty cool to be at a 10. It's probably one that I would just, uh, a lot of these, when they grade, I'm not going to sell them. I'm going to keep them because I like the cards. I'm a collector. I'm not really in uh, in the business of flipping um, unless I just don't like the card that much. This is a sweet one. Everyone's after this. It's the John ja Morant. Out of Luminance, out of Chronicles, um, that dunk is insane. I've seen the live clip of this. He actually missed the dunk, but but he is absolutely posterizing Kevin Love. It doesn't matter what he missed. Um, John Moran's such an explosive player, really fun card. These are going for 40 raw, 130 out of 9, and 350 <clears throat> out of 10. So that's a that's a cool one. That's, that's going to be a classic job for years to come. Here's another one out of Chronicles. We ripped, I think I ripped over $1,000 of retail. Some of it I even found on shelves. That was when I was actually trying to find it on shelves. I just gave up on on finding on trying that now. But uh, this is a pretty sweet prism teal update out of a mega box parallel um, first year nets for KD. He, um, and he's starting to, his cards are going back up as he's uninjured. And uh, they picked up James Harden. And this looks like a championship level team if they can pick up the defense. So uh, this card uh, could be worth quite a bit. It's going for you know, about 150 out of nine. And uh, there aren't any tens that I could find, but if you do the common multiple, you get to kind of 450 probably out of 10. So that's a pretty sweet card and one that can hold long-term value. Here's one that you've probably seen because a lot of you subscribed just because you watch my hoops videos. This is a John Morant Purple Disco out of retail, uh, hoops premium, awesome picture again. Um, <clears throat> this one, Obviously, there aren't any at PSA just yet, but raw it is going for one fifty. So if you take a <coughs> sorry, if you take a simple multiple at a PSA ten, this should be going for about uh, one uh, about four fifty probably. Um, and I do like to take notes just so I can kind of keep track of uh, PSA grade. The centering's a little off, but should be fine left to right. Um, I like to take notes in a spreadsheet. Uh, um, for each of my cards that I submit so I can note what the issues are if there are any minor ones. This one had some really minor, you're not going to be able to see it, but some really minor surface uh, issues on the front, just a, kind of a tiny fleck or two. Um, PSA is pretty uh, um, harsh with surfaces, so we will see. I still want to try to take a shot and see if I can get a 10. What oftentimes I will do if there's a slightly off if one aspect of the card is slightly off, but everything's perfect, like a, there's a minor corner issue or a minor surface issue, I'll send it to BGS. And because it's almost guaranteed you get a 9.5 and maybe you get a 9 on one of the subgrades. And obviously a BGS 9.5 is going to sell at a premium 
to a PSA 9, uh, but a discount to a PSA 10. Um, and, and one thing, one game I like to play or one uh, way I like to find value on eBay is um, if I find uh, a BGS Quad 9.5 or better, uh, those still sell for quite a bit less than PSA 10s. And in my view, especially for a PC card, a BGS 9.5 is every bit as good as a PSA 10. Um, and, and it still sells for, you know, at least a 25% discount typically. So I, so I'm giving that secret away to you guys. Uh, if you, if you just kind of like to PC stuff, just, just buy the BG, quad nine, five BGS. Um, why, why do you need a PSA 10? Um, here's another card. This is one of the first cards I pulled, um, uh, out of optic, out of just a hybrid box, hybrid hobby box. Um, pretty massive pull at the time. Kyler Murray, Silver Hollow. Uh, the centering is not great. I don't imagine, you know, I, this probably goes to a nine, um, but we will see. It is selling for 175 raw. These have gone down because his play, his throwing ability hasn't looked great lately. Uh, and at a 10, it's going for 650. Um, there's also, actually, you know, the edges and corners look pretty much fine. One thing I've noticed is even on PSA 10s, if I look at them, oftentimes they'll have, you don't want, you can't have chipping, but you can have like extra pieces left over from the cutting. Um, I, I've seen those on 10s. Um, so I don't think that'll necessarily be an issue, but the centering, uh, might be a little bit too right biased. Um, but, but it's still worth sending in and we're going up in value here again. So this is a pretty sweet Justin Herbert pink optic preview that I pulled out of a retail box of Donruss. Um, and these at the, t you know, at the time it was selling for the same as Tua. And now I pulled a, I pulled a Tua one uh, at the same time that I'm not going to grade because of the uh, surface has some issues, but I pulled these out of, out of the same box, which is just insane. Um, but anyway, this, this, uh, <clears throat> Justin Herbert, um, his cards are absolutely flying off the shelves, and this thing's selling for 250 raw right now. So this would be probably a 750 card at a 10, 750 dollar card at a 10. One thing that I have in my notes is that it has a single roller line going across uh, the back, which you're not gonna be able to see. And this is one that honestly I probably should send to BGS and get a guaranteed 9.5 because I don't know if PSA is gonna like that. Um, but uh, you know, very well centered. I think the front service was pretty pristine. Um, so I was really happy about that pull. At a, at a 10, it'd be a $750 card probably. <clears throat> then at a hoops premium, silver hollow, John Morant, base rookie, out of retail, awesome card. Uh, no comps for this at PSA. It's going for two to 300 raw. Prices have dipped a little bit as more hoops has hit the market. Um, but if I compare it to a PSA 10 uh, or a PSA 9 of Mosaic, Hoops is probably just a, a touch below Mosaic in the uh, hierarchy of basketball. Um, so a PSA 10 silver Mosaic is going for 1200 So I could say this might be a $1,000 card out of 10, which is pretty amazing. And, um, and so you can see how quickly the multiplier goes up. If you, if you can get 10s on these things... Uh, the value of pulling them is is absolutely massive, um, and at a nine it would be close. It would be more like three hundred. Um, so, and it's really this thing is in really good condition, um, and it's I think it has a good shot. It does have God, it does oops, it does have some minor again these damn roller lines on the back that you're seeing just Panini's freaking poor production process. We can we can send a a man to the moon, but we can't, uh, man or woman, uh, but we can't freaking print cards without print lines. Um, Gibby likes to say that the other day. So here's another, here's a really interesting one that, that I didn't realize was worth as much as it is, but this is a Jordan triple threads at a Skybox 1996. This is a card I had as a kid. And so I went through my old collection, looked at all my Jordans after the last dance documentary as those cards were, were selling like hotcakes on eBay found this was one of the only ones where the condition where I didn't kind of ding the corners or anything. This is in really, really good condition. There, there's some minor edge issues. Um, but, uh, I could see this getting, uh, at least an eight. 
uh, you know, maybe a nine. This is maybe one I should have sent to BGS. Let's try to get a nine five. But at a 10, one of these sold for $1,000. <laughs> at a nine, it's closer to three. Um, so, you know, it's probably not a 10, but, but uh, could be a really massive card uh, if it is. <clears throat> so that is my stack. And then if we go into, <clears throat> we can go quickly to Mike, in the, Mike on the Mike stack, which is just one, he has a couple cards, but the big one is this bad boy. Jason Dominguez on card. His auto is sick, by the way. I wish my auto looked like that. Auto on card at a Bowman Chrome to 99. One of the top prospects. I know nothing about baseball, um, but but that's what I'm told. And so if you look at comps on this, oh, one of them, PSA 10, just sold for $4,000. Uh, Mike on the mic pulled this out of a Bowman Chrome box. Unbelievable pull. Uh, $1,000 card probably at a nine. So regardless, and it's in excellent condition. So either way, just a massive, massive card at a baseball. That's going to be the only baseball that we have because Mike's the only one who's been ripping that. I don't do any baseball. Gibby does. He played baseball in college. He was a pitcher, so he, he's into that stuff. I'm more of a, I, I play a lot of basketball, uh, watch a lot of basketball. We all watch a lot of football. So now we get into Gibby stack, and this is where it starts to get even more interesting um they're just all big um so here's the, the smallest one he's done a lot of origins he's done extremely well in origins extremely well this is a jordan love love his auto with the j heart jordan Love short print to 25 out of origins on card auto that's the beautiful thing about origins sticker autos just don't look great even prism has sticker autos on card looks so clean with the blue ink um and so this is a card that uh, is going for probably about 500 out of 10, <clears throat> maybe around uh, 150 out of, out of 9. Um, so that's a nice one. Uh, and then we go right along. We ripped a ton of Mosaic. Barely any of it, any of it was gradable. Um, mosaic and Prism as well. Just, just real tough on surfaces front and back. A lot of print lines on the back, especially Mosaic. A lot of divots on the front. We worked a ton of it and just had to flip it all because none of it really looked gradable. So it's kind of, there's certain sets where the condition is, you know, there's going to be a lot lower percentage of cards that are gradable. And, and so it's not really advisable to rip, uh, but we did it anyway. <laughs> um, but this is a, this is one that, that did look gradable. Um, so this is a two up purple out of hobby, number to 49, short print, awesome card. I was super jealous of him when he pulled this. Um, Unfortunately, Tua's values have gone down, but this could be massive if he ends up uh, being as good as what he was supposed to be, what he was built out of coming out of build, uh, coming out of college. But but uh, to be determined on that. So this right now, this is a three hundred dollar card at a nine, and as, and one of them just sold at seven seventy five at a ten, um, but uh, could be a lot bigger depending on or a lot smaller depending on his career career trajectory. Um, this is one that Gibby bought, actually, as a single. Everything else, I think, was pulled, and it's a really sweet card. I was looking at buying these ones as well. It's Immaculate On-Card Shadow Box Auto. Um, really cool-looking card. He got a sweet deal on it. Uh, raw, I think he bought it for around $350 uh, once Tua's values plummeted. This card is, uh, you know, Justin Herbert's are selling for probably double that. Um, actually, maybe even more. But uh, so, no, you know, not clear what this would be uh, graded at, but if you just multiply the raw, because there's no uh, graded ones out yet, but if you multiply the, multiply the raw value of 350 uh, by 3x, you get a thousand, $1,000 card potentially at a 10. So that's a big one. And then uh, Gibby had ripped a lot of origins. He'd done really well, so he ripped a couple more, and he pulled this. Jalen Hurts Gold Ink. Auto 210, super short print, um, just an awesome card. And obviously uh, Jalen Hurts uh, you know, has potential to be a starting quarterback. He's not very accurate. He's got really good legs, um, you know, similar to a, a Lamar, but but Lamar's, Lamar's not a very good passer either, but he's getting better. Um, long way to go on the accuracy uh, front. But if he does become, you know, a starting caliber quarterback next year, we'll see what the Eagles do. Uh, this could be a massive card. As it stands now, it's a $500 card, raw, 
probably a $1,500 card at a 10. So another big one there. And then we go into more Mosaic. Gibby ripped a lot of it. And this is a case hit Patrick Mahomes stained glass. Really sweet card. Unfortunately, it is very OC. You can see the bottom there is super thin relative to the top. So, you know, it might it's probably going to be a stretch uh, to get a 10. It will be a stretch to get a 10 on this, but even if it's a 9, uh, it's a really cool card. He, I think he just wants to PC it because it's such a cool card and, and wants to get it slabbed uh, regardless just for his own uh, satisfaction. But if this were to 10, you'd get, it'd be a $1,500 card. At a 9, it's probably a $400 card. So a pretty cool case hit there. And then we get into some absolute monsters that I have uh, put in the back of my videos before because they're so nice. This is a Joey B Prism Red Wave Auto, to one, number to 149. Um, unbelievable pull out of Prism. Uh, this is a card that is worth a lot. Uh, I'm just trying to look through my spreadsheet here. It is, I should have showed this one last actually. It is a $1,200 card at a nine and a $3,600 card at a 10. Um, I've had this one sitting on my desk for about a month because we've been waiting to get our PSA submission in. Um, and so, you know, uh, hopefully my cats don't knock it off the desk or something because that is a really expensive card. And then finally, we will end with this one, Justin Herbert. Again, another massive pull for Gibby out of Origins. 25 out of 25, eBay 101, on-card Justin Herbert auto. His auto is really sick as well. Uh, just a massive pull. I, I really would love to, to take this from Gibby. Um, it is going for about $750 uh, raw or out of nine. And uh, so that would probably be... I think, oh, actually, no, a 10 did sell for $2,200, a PSA 10. So uh, these two cards alone, if they could 10, and they could, they're in really good condition, uh, would be worth uh, $5,000 to $6,000. Um, so that is uh, the bulk of the value in this submission is, is these two bad boys. So... Um, there you have it. Those are kind of our three stacks that we're submitting. Um, one thing I will do that I think will be useful for you guys is that uh, obviously we'll do a PSA reveal video when these come back. And I will, uh, you know, I have the nice thing is I have notes on the condition of all the cards. And um, when they come back, I will talk about what my notes were, what we thought the grade would be, whether we thought it'd be a, a 10 or a 9, and why. And then we'll see if that lines up with what PSA did. Um, so we can kind of get a sense for, help you guys get a sense for what PSA is looking for, what they care about um, in real time. Um, I haven't really seen a video that does that, so I think that'll be pretty useful. The only issue is that we're not going to get these cards back for a long time, given the delays at PSA, but that video will be coming. Um... Anyway, that's going to do it for uh, the PSA submission video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, this is Curse Miso signing off. Thanks.